Hey, welcome back. I'm Machine Gun Dad. This is our first of the series of uh, German 8mm Mausers. And again, we are doing the ones we don't have. One of the ones that's very common and I tried to get for the video series, but they've gone up so much money, I, they're not worth what people want for them, is the Gewehr 88 Commission Rifle. Um, you can look that up on the internet. That is often sold as a World War II gun. Uh, it may have seen service as secondary in some little little country but it's not the 98k but it also has a, um, um, a bottom man liquor style loading device check that out all right but let's get into what we do have what we do have is a world war one i'm going to wipe some of the oil off i don't know if he'll be able to pick up this the stamping here this is a World War One. it's called the Gewehr 98. This is an unmodified one, it has the World War One sights. This gun is actually relatively valuable, um, but it's not correct for World War II. Um, this is not the 98K or the K98K that the uh, bad guys used in World War II. This is still a collectible gun. It is not the 98K. It, but it's still a good gun. But if you want to be a purist, because these are close to the price of the lower price 98Ks, you could easily buy this thinking you're buying a 98K because this is you know over a thousand but under two. So be careful. Not that you're getting a bad gun, but if you're a World War II collector, this isn't going to fit the notch. All right. This is a Car 98 or the Stormtrooper rifle. This is also a World War I German gun. However, even though it's a car, it actually says, I'm going to spin it around, it's hard to see. Right here, it says K98. But it's not a K98K. This is a World War I gun. But again, an unscrupulous dealer. I think the guy that sold this to my buddy told him this was a World War II gun. This one has been sanitized. Now, I've got a really interesting email from one of the people who saw my intro video. And we're going to read that to you in, in entirely. Entirety. Boy, I can't speak today. But this one also has a worn out crown, and we want to get you a close in on this. So, this rifle, sanitized, worn out crown, World War I gun, is nowhere near the value of a K98K. Um, we're going to zoom in, and we've already done it. We're going to film, try to get you a picture of the inside of this because with a worn crown, you can't hit anything with this gun. This gun needs to be counterboard to have the barrel replaced. All right, we're going to pause for a second. I'm going to dig us some email out. All right, we've zoomed in on the um, beginning of the, the Car 98. It's difficult to see, but the rifling isn't sharp. Towards the end, it tapers and fades out. And that's what you call it's called losing your crown. Um, it unstabilizes the bullet. And when we take this out on the range, I'm pretty much will be able to demonstrate that. But that is something really important to look for when you're buying any of these rifles. If you have this type of crown where it's worn this bad, you have to have the barrel counterboard. Uh, I haven't found anybody to do that yet, but as soon as I do, I will. All right, let's go back to the regular video. All right, I want to read you this email that a gentleman sent me on the first intro I did. And if you remember, I had all the rifles across. And this one was all the way on my left, which would be your right. This is my World War I K98. And this is what he sent me. First of all, his name is Alex Antonopoulos. I hope I got that right. Um, he obviously knows way more about Mausers than I do. The Mauser all the way to the right had a very interesting life. That would be this one. It started out as a Car 98 under the German Empire. After World War I, it became property of the new, newly formed Polish Republic and was reworked to their specifications, being fitted with their padding as stacking hook and sling attachments. So basically, 
This is how he knew it was a Polish gun. And was designated the Karbenik, I don't speak Polish, WZ-98PWU. It was subsequently scrubbed of all Polish markings and shipped off to Spain in support of the Republican forces fighting in the Spanish Civil War. I'm going to show you, if you look here, like he says, there's no crest, there's no crown, there's no manufacturing number left on it. So, as he said, it was scrubbed. After the war and after the close of World War II, in which Spain was officially neutral, it was sold as surplus and imported to the U.S. by Sam Cummings of Inner Arms. So now you know the true story of my World War I K98. And that's another thing that I've brought up. Just because these guns aren't K98Ks doesn't mean there isn't history. I'm sure there's a story to be told on this one. We'll be out in the range in a few minutes. All right, we're back at the live fire, um, or with the live fire. Stan's going to shoot the uh, car 98. He tried to sight it in. It's like mm, three feet left and three feet low. He did manage to hit the steel twice. But we are taking account we are shooting at a plate that's two feet by two feet at about 110 yards. Um, we're using the bottom of the barrel 8 millimeter. That's Romanian from my machine gun days, or like last week, where we, uh, we sort out the uh, ugly stuff because you're not going to run ugly 8 millimeter in a multi thousand dollar machine gun. All right, Stan, go ahead and give it a whirl. impact but the bullet shifted a foot and a half left now it's a foot and a half higher it's not him it's the rifle hit the steel that time you're using the same point of impact point yep, of aim, same right? hold same hold and it's just all over the place left of the target, so again, when the impact shifted. Okay, that should be the last one. Let me take my earmuffs off. So basically what I tried to tell you earlier is when the crown of a gun is gone, like that one is, he's a pretty good shot. His group there was eh, four and a half feet at 100 yards. Now. You could say you could blame it on the ammo, but we shot all Romanian 8mm, so it really isn't the ammo. If the crown is gone, you got to counterbore the barrel or rebarrel the gun. All right, we're going to pause for a second. We'll come back with the G98. Since Stan had such a bad experience with the previous rifle and he couldn't basically hit anything, not his fault, we're going to let him shoot the Gewehr 98. Um, this gun, he, we just pre-shot it. It shoots about a foot foot and a half high at 110 yards, left to right's dead nuts on. Stan's going to show you how to load it with the stripper clip and how it should be properly used. All right, go ahead, Stan. right where he was aiming. Your point of aim was where? Uh, six o'clock center of the target. So that puts it about, yeah, like you said, about foot, foot and a half low, a uh, foot, foot and a half high at 100. All right. Take your earphones off for a second. All right, you shot them both. Now, take into account this one does have a bad barrel, but mm -hmm. how, how does, which one feels better? In terms of the feel, this one feels better to shoulder, better to handle, but uh, I'd say I like the sight picture for this thing better. It's a much finer front sight blade, 
so you can actually you can actually aim more precisely. So definitely see that, if, especially if you're shooting at a greater distance beyond 100, this would definitely be the way to go. But like I said, definitely see why you want for this though, the shorter, comp more compact rifle, moving about the trenches, trying to get the early stages of fire and maneuver. That makes sense. So both nice rifles, a lot of fun to play with. But the key point of the video is they're both nice. They're both nice rifles, but they're not K98Ks. So make sure you know what you're buying. Now you know what they both look like. If you see one in the gun store, it gives you a starting point. When a guy tries to sell you it's a K98K, and you're like, no, it's a Car 98. It's World War One, and you can start looking for markings and proof marks. And always, always check the barrel because if you buy a super nice looking rifle and the barrel's crap. You're going to have a ton of money and rebarrel in it. And then it's not going to be worth what you paid for because it won't be original anymore. All right. Thanks for coming to the channel.